Silence is the crickets. And won't you know, I told you, they coming for you. Finland is now making Soylent cricket bread. Okay, I added the Soylent. So they're coming for you, folks, unless you make the difference, which is to actually do something. Not just think about it, not just know about it, not just study it. And uh, as I just said that, it got, got me right to one of my tabs. Isn't that interesting? Didn't think about it before. We'll get right to this. And before I do on Passcast, Broadcast, Recast, or whatever the cast is on this world stage, I think this number here would be B- episode BTWRLM247. We'll get you the content page when I get the broadcaster up, and you can go read all the de- more details uh, about how a lot of this works, what I talk to you to try and expose what's transparent to us. And uh, if you can't see it, what's what you're at, what's hitting you, and what's after you? Uh, how are you going to fight it? How are you going to begin? And maybe some of you don't want to see it. Uh, I get a I, I get a lot of uh, hesitation or resistance a bit, um, and uh, that that's going to be a, a that's going to be a problem. And I mean problem from getting things done and taking care of. For, for instance, and all of us that have researched for decades and and eons, it seems. And uh, boy, what a in a way, what a what a life wasted at some level. As I told you a long, long time ago, I uh, I realized I was reading on things that really people shouldn't have to know. But but the 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 reality was we were gonna we we have to know this stuff because of what happened. The occupation that we're under, and many of there's many you can des- describe this in lots of ways, and this is part of the problem. The many levels of the chess game that are being played. Well, you're playing, you know, checkers. You're, they're playing multi-level, multi-dimensional chess. And, and this is a real problem. That if we don't get to all that, we don't realize that, we don't focus on that, we're just a bunch of wasted time, actually, it seems. Uh, and I, I mean, I know we'll have lives that we live, and things will seem fine, but actually the... Uh, devolution, the de- literally the devolution, the slide into the stinking abyss will uh, envelop us. And uh, that requires energy to crawl out of if you can. And I think we could if we could all get together. But a lot of people place the amount of knowledge they have, or they think they have actually. Uh, and again, I'm, a lot of you that will be listening think I'm insulting. I'm just trying to show you some facts of, of misobservations, uh, things that I've learned by experience. And it is the experience that becomes the problem. The truth is the lack of your experience. Uh, it may be all the knowledge in the world, but it's the lack of your experience to put it into the action that's going to be what I'm talking about right here. And something came up in the Minds feed, and I happened to notice it. Thank you to Minds.com and the people that promote the broadcast there, send it around and remind it, uh, remind the broadcast each week. We, we do pretty well over there at Minds.com. For, that's a uh, com- supposedly, I guess, a competitor uh, against the censorship uh, around. I use it just to point point people to more information because it's a tent to me it's the information that I think you need. It's not just a knowledge. It's it's well, I tell you what you take this knowledge and it means something and then that's that's what you start with to go find how you have to counter it. No, so it, it, something came through uh, that seemed to epitomize the thing that kind of bothers me a lot about the people and what they think they know and what they think they're about and whether or not they act and all this. It was the this. This almost this smugness that if I do enough research and know enough things that I'm, what they say, woke. <laughs> uh, some of this stuff, folks, just comes to me at the last second. Uh, I can't help it. Um, it's funny to me. Uh, it's not funny, but it's funny to me. But you're woke. Okay, big deal. Awake. Okay, fine. Get out of bed. Now do something. I mean, put your pants on. Do something. And so... That something came through the minds feed, and uh, I know some of you may take it as a criticism, and it is, but it's not a judgment. It's just the fact of what goes on. It was an, an indication, it, and the anomalies, in the, and I'll call it the hypocrisy within the concepting, uh, that uh, someone would say uh, and tell people, and this is not incorrect. It just doesn't. I want to show there's. A, I want to just explain it's a shortfall. It, it, it you become uh, smug in your own what you think is knowledge, and uh, that's not enough. That uh, was a, a, a pain, a, a meme, a picture 
and somebody put a lot of time into doing this, so I don't want to get into all that. A lot of effort put into this stuff that that I wonder what the effort really is. And it says the, the whole thing starts out with the big word research, and then it has a whole list of things. And let me let me preface the the way it looks is in the center is a uh, what apparent apparently is a un, uh, anonymous uh, logo and the mask that mask I tell you about that everyone picked up on the the, the V mask, which I've told you is really the it it seems to be now the the symbol of the Jesuit order. Uh, and so uh, that's right in the middle of the picture. But around it is this word research is a header. And then down is all these subject matter studies that you you need that this whoever this is is telling us to do and research. And the implication is learn about these things. And I can say you look at the list and I'll read it through a few and you just tell me how many we don't cover here. Uh, learn about these things. But that's where this pain, this pain, this meme ends. This uh, message ends. Just do the research. This is the thing I have a problem with. That will help you actually. But let me. Re- you just tell me how many things we've uh, touched on or tangentially hit, or the concepting behind the woodshed. All these things, all these years. Uh, some I don't get in too deep. I've actually said I won't. It was other people were speaking, but I've touched on them, uh, and most of them. So let me just go through the list for all you all that do all your research and do all your checking. Let me just see if you can make this check on your list. Uh, have you researched Operation Northwoods? Who owns the mainstream media? Cla- calcified pineal glands, the Bilderberg Group, 9-11 Inside Job, Trans-Pacific Partnership, NWO, Factory Farming, Glyphosate, Agenda 21, who funded is, is, and LCIA, Al-Qaeda, Monsanto Protection Act, NDAA, Indefinite Detention, Joe Biden Molesting girl, Children, Taxation is theft. I'll interject here before I read it. You know it's extortion. This isn't even. This is the other problem I'll point out here as we go. 1984. Illegal NSA spying. Shadow government. You're making the checks, folks. All you folks that know so much and are awoke about all this research you've done. CERN's head and the Hadron Collider. You're, you're making a list of all the stuff that these people want you to know. Fluoride. Chemtrails. Operation Paperclip. Shadow government. Royal bloodline. Bin Laden. CIA agent. Lobbying, cannabis cures, GMOs, uh, political revolving door, animal agriculture, climate change, Homan Square, Bohem- Bohemian Grove, World Trade Center, Pentagon lost 2.3 trillion, shift of consciousness, who owns the Federal Reserve, Big Pharma, FDA corruption. How many did you get on that list, folks? How many have we talked about? Uh, however, di- however, we do. I do hear. Uh, to expose certain things about it, and really not those things. It's really what's behind those things. How many on the, that list could you mark that you've researched and known that I want to point out, and the thing that gets me is uh, that won't be enough. You could research, folks, when you got your research, what have you done with it? What has that helped you on, except to look around and find you live in an illusion? My question is, now what? Now what? And this is what I try to explain every week. Let's go read through the, the notice. They call it the news. Let's go find something that we can get really righteously indignant about that needs to be made, a wrong we need to make right. Let's just focus on any one of these things. Another thing I want to point out is, that remember, I talked to you about that mask. Why was someone that's so woke about all this research use the uh, Jesuit mask as, uh, and hides behind the Jesuit mask as a symbol for anonymity? What is that knowledge and that connection? If you're so woke, so understanding, so knowledgeable, why do you use improper connections? To me, this is a checklist of where you start to dig in. You can find out about so-called Agenda 21. Do you, do you understand about it? Do you understand what I tell you about how it's implementing, the method of implementation that's global? Do you understand that? Do you understand to turn it around on people? Those that are in the environmental terrorist group, uh, uh, groups, the ones that use so-called food security, do you know how to turn them around without an argument? It's what they do is the felony against us. I want to point out this. Go ahead and research all this stuff. Know all this stuff. But folks, when at the end of the day, what are you doing about it? What are you settling down on one of these things? That's why I've come to the point. I don't care if you drop into any one of those. Well, a couple of them may not get you much farther because it's not much you can do about it. 
but settle in on any one of those. You don't have to learn about any of the others. You settle in on one that catches your attention and you bore down and you're going to find out the seemliness of the whole thing. And each one of those will come out of a, from an agenda that you will find the same thing I've been telling you is running it. That's what you're not fighting. You're running the surface by all your knowledge. You're not going after what actually has the cause. And this becomes the problem in how you do your remedies and how everybody doesn't understand what I'm kind of getting at or they just reject what I'm saying. The, re the remedies, the, the lack of recourse is the example of what I'm telling you is driving the ability of all these. And then be careful, some of these are, a, are a, what, a dis a dis um disinfo if if you will as well some what they promote in that isn't what you should know like i tell you one of the uh, i believe the distinctions i make are the protocols of the elder design stop using it as an as a document of dis, of dif difference and look at it as an instruction manual and if you don't think they've gone beyond that uh, on your frailties and telling you what, about them and that they're using them against you then you're making a big mistake so if you learned all about the protocols of the elders and you just looked at it and you called it, okay, I'm good, I'm, I'm woke now, I've got the knowledge, what good is it is the point. So the point being not to denigrate anybody's research because you have to have it. You have to have enough in you to kind of finally see that it really is the illusion. But knowing of the illusion is not going to stop it, nor those that are imposing it to get, use it as cover to violate you, to abuse you, to steal from you, whatever, they'd kill you, literally murder you folks all over the world. Rule, O law, and democracy. It comes by all kinds of names. It goes around and it destroys the world. And we shouldn't be all right with that. Now, we can't just stop the, well, I don't know, maybe there is some people that have are organized that could do this. I'm not, somehow. I don't tend to be someone that <laughs> that inspires a lot, but... Uh, well, if, I'm not saying none. Don't get all of you guys that do, all you folks and girls, gals and girls that do. Don't. I understand you're out there and you, and you do your study. That's not. No, I'm not talking about those of you. you know, I'm just talking about all the, everybody else because we're, it, it does. It is going to take everyone's awareness. The prairie dogs. We all need to see the same evil. Oh, we need to see the evil that's there, not the same one. But I suggest it comes down into very narrow numbers of evils that are upon us that are being used as tools. And all you can get lost in all of these things. And until you find the core of any one of these things and go into that place, you're just wasting your time beyond it. And all your knowledge about all that subject matter does you no good. And I would ask you, maybe if I, maybe I'm too presumptuous, what good has it done you other than to say how much I know? It certainly hasn't helped anything I know about. And what I do to try and stop it, or those I work with that attempt to stop it, and I don't say I say attempt, but where we can focus in, it literally stops, folks. This nonsense just stops. A lot of this stuff is becomes irrelevant. What you know, as I told you when I first started talking here, I, I was learning, and this is a couple of decades ago. I realized I was reading things that most of us, all of us, really shouldn't have to be dealing with to have to know. But the very fact that you have to know them shows you there's an occupation that has to be dealt with. There's a there's a wrong against all of us coming from so many different tentacles of this this almost almost transparent beast. Because it's not even these things. It's not even the things. The methods that drive it aren't even those that are doing it. And those that are doing it are the are the uh, the puppets and muppets that move it along. The minion that move it along. They're not even the actual. Uh, again, the, the 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 cause. They're not the causative factor. They're, they're all evidences of the cause. And this is where become the probability of some possibilities I talked to you about. You don't quite know what you're really looking at, actually. As I've told you, I mean, it seemed pretty clearly. I and I didn't I didn't appreciate the resistance or the lack of awareness or the lack of ability to become aware of the very very simple things. As I found, I was stated to, like in the Libra Code, how much easier does it get when they tell you you, you know you knows them when you see them, folks? Stop stop making stories about the wrong you see. That's the wrong, the military consequence. Stop stop ignoring it. The occupation, the occupiers, stop and ignore it. That that when you see them, they're going to be setting up a system that makes them them transparent to you. You will not know what you look into the system that it's wrong. It'll have all the all the the earmarks and all the frills and all the uh, ex extenuating false fronts that you need to be convinced 
You can buy into that system. How are you going to deal with that? And then what are you going to do after you've seen that? How do you deal with that thing? It's not going to be fulfilled in your research about topical subject matters. Any one of those. Well, I would say more as I look at the list, the three quarters of what I know, what I've read out may get you somewhere, most likely would get you somewhere to start to look at something to do, not just know. Knowing of a thing is not doing anything about a thing. Knowing of a thing is not power. I'm, uh, I'm going to continue saying I keep hearing this stuff over and over and over. And no, uh, knowledge is power. It, it's nothing, folks. Knowledge is just sitting there contemplating your navel and all your glory of how much you thought you knew. Now what are you going to do about all this oppression and wrong and plunder? Uh, it's up to you. I don't even make that call. You, I guess your choice can be nothing, but then you become the accessory to the crime against all the rest of us. You, you gave in. The steak tastes too good, folks. You just jump back into the matrix of it. And that's an illusion, too. I don't know what more to say. I could end it all right here if you all fully got that and didn't make an excuse against it. Uh, I fully, again, I fully encourage your research. What I'm go- coming to the tell you today when I saw that, that little meme, we talk about a meme, and what they can't, what, what information they provide, didn't provide, I don't think, the information that they, uh, the poster meant. Uh, but uh, it is the truth. It's the truth of the limitation of us. And I don't uh, don't know the uh, poster, so I don't know the uh, intention. Uh, that could have been as, as good as it could have been bad, uh, given that you believed it and you limited your look at that. There's so much more to study than that list anyway, and so much less uh, uh, sensational. It's really boring, actually, this stuff. They make it that way. Very tedious. So, I guess, we'll stop there, I suppose. Research, folks. But but then go and take that knowledge. Really learn about the game uh, of wrong, uh, the game of the wrong that you're after and learn how to defeat it. Learn how, uh, I think I saw another meme. It was, I don't remember the statement. It said, learn the Learn the subject matter. I'm going to paraphrase it because I don't remember it. Learn the subject matter of the profession so well that you become art, uh, an artist and how to destroy it with its own thing. Uh, that's kind of that. Would, that kind of struck me as more the the point. Uh, use the tools available because that's the only thing going. The power looks at the tools available. And use those tools. Use the rules of those that that condition. So well, so if I can say artfully, I don't like the word artful because that's deceptively. But in that case, you're trying to make a wrong a right, or a right a wrong. Then you're uh, the 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 artfulness is coming in under the deception that you're actually doing it for the purpose that it was made and not to defeat that purpose, which is to take you out. And so there's a lot of again, just by nature, you're in an adversarial condition means you're not in peace. You're not in you're not in the the peace that you were told no matter where you live. And then you have all these interferences. I see a little conversation. Beth, the Iran was a beautiful before the Cultural Revolution. Folks, this thing in Iran is all, it has to be a setup. It's going by the it's going by the game plan. Remember, what, seven countries in five years? Iran was on the ticket. Uh, Trump coming out and saying that, oh, the, the people are stepping up. No, if we didn't have such dirty hands, the United States hasn't been known now to be involved in all these color revolutions. Uh, you know, I guess I could feel good about that. No, this is a setup. This is a setup. Oh, now they're going to say looking at humanitarian violations. Well, as soon as the government that they've attacked a color revolution and subverted or trying to subvert or tries to protect itself against it, they're going to be blamed for so-called human rights violations. What happened to constitutional rights? Why does the uh, government uh, hold up UN human rights that are subject to a central authority? Why why don't we think past all this? I'm not saying we as a, a totality. Some of us see through it. So be, be careful of what's happening. And you see the people that claim to be innocent and on the sidelines are really, in the most part, if they have the power to do it, they are in it. There's no doubt. No doubt in my mind. Uh, I'm, I'm beyond. In fact, we saw that they were now all, of, all of a sudden advertising it was claimed that there was no advertisement about this so-called uh, color revolution, and because there was no advertisement through the MSN, that means that there was a real thing. No, folks, that's part of the plan. Uh, this thing is a setup. It's just like everything else. And I, I was, uh, I would say, well, as soon as they uh, now 
they're going to start the peaceful protest. My question last night was, or night before, whenever it was I first heard, when do the, does the violence start? That's the very next thing. Yeah, I don't think it was three hours after I said that they were already talking about explosions happening just outside the peaceful protests that are now causing problems. And this morning, I understand now they've gone violent, those protests. So this is it, folks. This is a setup. The United States is dirty of it, uh, right up to, to their eyeballs, if not sunk deep into it. Uh, other countries are involved. Uh, we just can't leave people alone, and I don't think that's okay. What do you do about that part? I don't know. But you can start by finding a wrong you need to make right. You can take this list I just called you off. You can do whatever you want with it, but uh, I'd say focus in on something. Help those around you by focusing in on something and starting to be the example of doing something against it. Not just busy work, actual results, uh, um, gathering uh, evid- uh, work. It's all, if I hadn't seen us doing it, I wouldn't, you know, I guess I couldn't tell you this. There's a certain way to approach this, and the people that you're starting to, that, that would have been up against you, that have come quietly and silently and visibly, transparently to you to destroy you, uh, are, are un- unclothed, are, are un- unmasked, uncloaked very quickly. And then that response is going to be all kinds of different. You, that's when you just have to be, and you, that's what you're just going to have to be, um, what do I call, a fluid on your feet. You know, you have to kind of think on your feet and get things going on. Uh, try to, well, you just got to be fluid on your feet. You got to be thinking ahead. If you're 10 steps ahead, it doesn't, it's not that much, uh, not not much that, that hard. Again, until I can't even talk, I started thinking, how do I explain it? Uh, the... Uh, you won't know that until you get involved. You won't know what I'm saying, and I can't explain it until you get involved. And so that's a that becomes the problem of your interaction again. It's not something that you uh, guess and by golly. It's something that you uh, gain by experience. It's not something that you can, well, I can tell some of it to you, but Everything you do, everybody that I work with, everybody over all this time, everybody's action to do something has been different. We can come in generalities at the beginning of it, but when it comes where the rubber meets the road, you have to sit back and look at what the very particular, everybody's, all these people you're dealing with are people, and they have their different way of dealing with it. They have their different levels of, uh, what do you call them? Uh, resistance and, and arrogance uh, about how good they think they are or who, and this is the serious one, actually who they have to protect them. And this is when we get to the higher levels, like into judgeships and prosecutors and all this other nonsense. And I'll just quickly mention without getting too deep, uh, the fact of, of how you see the prosecutor, like in the Bundy case, they're not taking that guy out. They're, they're doing a big shuffle right now. Serious, serious problem. Complete injustice, travesty, uh, beyond the mere uh, appearance of impropriety, folks. And they are coming in to rally up to try and protect that condition. They've got to make sure you think that the court system is just. And I've shown you in so many ways how the statutes say they can't be. I don't know why people don't listen to me about that, how to easily go and and produce it. Uh, They allow other so-called representatives do that instead yeah, and yet, here we have it. They let people watch. All the so-called woke people, all the people that have knowledge, all the people that truly understand are watching the criminal get away with it. it. It partly drives me nuts, but I partly understand it, and so I have to just sit back. I have to give it over to all the um, inefficiencies and ineffectivenesses of, of action that I see. Uh, I guess, and I just have to balance it again. Against when I I start to step in to do things a certain way, all the nastiness of the subtle tricks that pop out. If you're not aware, I just know that if you're not aware of how that works, you'll have no clue it's being done to you, let alone that because you're doing it then. You won't even know the transparent trick, uh, let alone if you have never started and you look into something. It, it's it's just a fascinating type thing. I mean, down to. How do I know when I when they when a government administer court administrator comes back with a question about a f- application and they hit why and not if you didn't know this that they hit exactly the point that if you answer their question wrong they can defeat your entire presentation why do they know to go there at all 
Why did that become a question when it shouldn't have been either? It is really a fascinating observation. It's really a fascinating uh, problem. How is it that they know to do that? How is it that that that's where they come in? How is it that that's, that's the thing you have to know to stop? And it takes a little bit to work through. If you're not aware of it, you'll, you'll blow right by it. All the people that I've heard that talks about exactly what's going on, they don't have a clue. They have never been involved. And you'll, you'll, they'll tell you that they haven't been involved. But people think that that's the uh, end, and, end. Their research is the end all be all. It's, it's just the beginning of the totality of what you might be or may or may not be up against. Because when you finally focus on something, the only thing that will bear upon your knowledge, your, your terminology, your dictionary words, your law, the application is all going to be determined on the subject matter that you address. It's, it's exactly what I keep telling you. If you don't understand, like, let's say, what a stakeholder is and where it originates, and then that, that should get you into a deep study to find out exactly what you're dealing with. If you don't understand what that is and you're walking up against one, you don't understand the method that they're using, it doesn't matter what your terminology is. It doesn't matter what you think. You're being dealt with by a system that's already got it worked out before you got there. On the other hand, you find out who you're dealing with and you put them in their proper place even within that status because you use exactly what's been set up. You become effective in destroying what they thought they had that was running transparent to you. I talk about the stakeholder. That's a whole system of things. I can guide anybody, and I have, to look at that, and it's all up to each one, that the, the interest of each one that studies what I explain. I guide them. Again, I gave you to the trailhead. And I say, go down there and look for this, this, and this. And in the process, don't forget what you find, because it's going to be more than what I found. I found enough to be able to make sure I understood what was going on. I didn't need to know. I wasn't going to be the guru on consensus policy systems. I was just knowing that was the tool. I learned about it sufficiently to know what to look for, how to look for it, how to defeat it. I don't need to know any more than that for what I do or what I tell people to do. I don't want to be one of them, but I did have to learn enough. And that's what be any subject matter. But did you know that? I mean, did you know when you heard, how do I come up with the ideas of stalking horses and, well, the stakeholders, that they're the felon against you? How do I know all this? It's I study it. I study the effect of it. I apply all that stuff that people research and I apply it. That's the beginning of doing the application. Apply that knowledge somewhere to something. And if you don't, you'll be an endless, uh, what, what they, educated uh, idiot, I suppose, I guess the term he's called is people went to college that just uh, learned a lot but didn't know nothing. And they, how do you like that grammar? Not Grammy, grammar. And, and so it's just a, you can be one of those or you can be someone who puts it together a lot better and does something, at least for yourself. And then that should example, if you're doing, you know, if we get into this, this so-called uh, extraordinary remedies, you'll notice that there's always attachment to the le the bigger uh, good, the larger good. You're doing what what you do for you has to have a ramification that actually affects others. That's what you're looking at. And if you're not in that, if you're just fixing your problem, you, you don't you're not in the area that I'm talking about. Everything I talk about and do, uh, it, it has such great uh, effect when you put it right on the rest of society. Uh, that it's beyond question that I've fulfilled at least the one one uh, requirements of working an extraordinary remedy. And it's really about all we have left to call this thing out. So it's right there. Uh, you could go off on your own tangents or you can focus all that knowledge you have. And I'll tell you, as soon as you find out, you know, knowing, let's say, about nor knowing about any subject matter in the general We'll give you enough knowledge to know that it's there, but that probably that subject matter will probably not be what you need to do use to do anything. It's just a knowledge you have. It's back there. You're going to be dealing with the much more nuts and bolts of what's going on real time. So this is a that knowledge won't come to you until you start it, and and, and everyone will talk about how they know so much, and I'll tell you they don't. Not, not at the application stage. And I'll, I tell you, I admire a lot of people who have done a lot of research. I cannot condemn at all any of it. But, but what are you actually doing about it? Are you using it to defeat yourself or are you using it to empower you? 
And I'm, some people are in trouble with the empowerment thing. Okay, fine. It's like any entitlement word. It's all the new stuff. You can take the language. You can destroy it. I think you get the idea. You can be powerful with your knowledge. You can be empowerful, empowered with it uh, if you and when you decide to use it. Otherwise, it's it means nothing. It becomes as trivial. All this information and so-called knowledge becomes as trivial as uh, any other artifact of knowledge in a board game. Trivial pursuit, didn't they call it? And and, and so here we are, uh, right here, uh, and uh, at the end of the year, aren't we? Uh, right to the end of the year. Are we going to make a difference in the new year? I tell you, that there's a lot of momentum here. There's a lot of uh, people I see that are doing some things, and I would just like to have all that knowledge focused into action. And it's going to be a stumbling. You'll stumble along as you start doing it. But that's the, that's the, in a way, that's the cool part. That's when you're coming to terms with the uh, humility of how much you really didn't know, but how fast you'll learn it and how fast you're capable of picking it up uh, to go after and fi fix the thing that you, uh, you didn't see, uh, that you, you, well, you saw, you finally saw, and you saw it in a way that you could fix it. And so you find that wrong and you have the ability to make it right. Whether you could do it on your own, that's a matter of what, what subject matter you pick uh, or how you go about it. Uh, and then uh, I, I found as you do that and you slowly make people aware of what you're doing, more people come uh, to bear to help in their in what they want to know. They help you in what they from what their perspective is. I got people I tell things. The information they find is in a way useless to me. It's not useless in that I can monitor what, what they're doing in that I can uh, suggest to them uh, certain tracks of information that uh, once they know it, they won't need it. They just needed to know it is there, and now they need to move on to another place, uh, or that that'll be the information they found is actually foundational, uh, or how it's going to be used, where it's going to be used, and why it gets used. I can guide those things, but it's not my information, and it's not something that I, I focus on. Uh, so we all, and we can all pull from the common, our knowledge, our, our effort, and it starts to fortify us in, in ways that maybe we would have never thought of if we didn't do it. So um, I'm pitching the, pitching the action here, folks, again. It's a, continuously. First, you have to look through the transparency. Stop looking through the glass. The glass is the barrier. The glass they want you to see through uh, the, is the thing you have to start focusing on, finding out how actually dirty it is, why your, why your view is, is all... Um, uh, obscured is because of this glass you didn't see was them doing the obscuration part. It's them. Now, now, how do you how do you go about that? Do you just break the glass or try to break the glass? You find out maybe it's bulletproof. Maybe it won't break. Maybe it deformed. Maybe it'll heal itself. Now you got a problem. Now you attack too quick before you found out the nature of this thing. And so this is all the things I've been talking to you for years and years. It's gonna it, nothing's gonna work and change out. And, and stop our, our complaining and whining about it until we find some way to do it, uh, to stop it. Our knowledge about, let's say, this thing in Iran and the so-called color revolution, as soon as they put the color revolution out, you knew where the source was. I mean, I don't even know why there's a, a, con a continuing discussion about it. The United States and the so-called coalition uh, has their hands thick in this thing, and it's dirty. I don't care how, I really don't care then how bad the so-called regime, the the, the the government that's being run is is when we are trespassing as a, gov as a as a nation we have no right to be looking at what human rights violations are when we have our hands in so many dirty is so dirty in places around the world as talk, talking about the United States and we can make the distinction of the United States of America that's just the states and those people in the states but it's all this supposed union that become overtaken and taken down and we hear crickets on all that. So uh, it's up to us, uh, is really the point. Uh, you can all do what you do. Uh, you can do it wrong, and you can continue the pain against you, or you can learn better each time on how to do it better. And uh, I think at some point, again, without let's say, get quickly back to the Bundys, and I'm not doing, uh, you know, I'm not going to make any constant d discussion on this right now. Uh, but if you, you watch all the harm and the injustice and all, and everybody has their own opinion on that. They just keep, oh, there's the accident. Oh, there's the accident. Oh, there's the accident. And no one presses all the players, the ones that are supposed to have the authority, with the fact that they're failing to do certain real simple things uh, to make make the travesty what it's supposed to be. 
as I said last week, everyone wants to focus on this thing going on. The prosecutor, don't, Sessions is in on that. They made the decision to allow that. Now, where's the outcry against the totality of the system having the appearance of impropriety, and they were supposed to not even come close to the mere appearance of impropriety? Where's all that stuff? We're so far into organized criminal syndicate stuff, racketeering, we missed the very first point. If I start arguing mere appearance, what happened to the mere appearance when you're already doing crime? When did, why didn't you stop it way back then? We, we might have a big distance to have to not argue so much. How is this not valid, invalid or uh, break breaching the the, uh, the the trust for the of the standard for the mere appearance of a impropriety? And then we start to destroy this not, this idea that this there's a justice system, and it's really we start seeing it's just us. It's this occupation that rules your life, that destroys production, that goes as you see the I tell you the so-called Agenda 21, sustainable development, uh, whatever name you want to call it. The Bar Association is thick in promoting it, and it'll do everything where appropriate. It's right in their own documentation. Do I hear anybody else bringing that up anywhere? No, I don't know why. And I'm bringing it up again. When you're dealing with those kinds of people, what do you expect, folks? When you start talking about things like, oh, the, the prosecution is uh, uh, you know, d- d- telling lies or was involved, you're missing the point. These people aren't in, a, in the condition, in a state. They aren't in a status. They aren't conflicted uh, that can keep them from doing these things. We can keep talking about what they do, but what's the impetus that allows it from the beginning? is this entire system. And so you can you can talk about the who done it's the singular prosecutors that are doing it in certain cases, but it's the entirety of the system, folks. What do you what do you why are we focused on the wrong things? And so if the system wants to purport that it has to, cannot breach the mere appearance of impropriety, why don't we start there? And then we show how, see, we have a standard, we have a foundation from which we were supposed to see the, the, them not trespass or go beyond, and how far this thing has gone and have been allowed to go, and every other superior officer around there was required, uh, and so-called official was required to stop it long before, brings them all into culpability. And we get to restore what the standard is. Not that they get to beat down on everybody and persecute people and use the system and the rules and the obligations and duties of what they claim that you have by fraud. No, we say, no, we are now of knowledge that you are really willing to go way beyond the mere appearance. I don't know if you appreciate how, uh, how delicate this statement is, how easy it is to breach this. That they, are, they have made the standard that the mere appearance of impropriety is too much. I don't want to get lost in that, but you have to understand what that means, how far these people have, uh, uh, that allow this and watch how you allow it. And then you come in with all your arguments about, oh, the, they, oh they violated this right and this, and, the, and, the, and, and then the, with all these cases, now we get these, uh, uh, these certain uh, doctrines that come up. Who cares? Who cares about all those viola- Brady, well, the, the Brady violate? Who cares? They went past the mere appearance of impropriety. The system should be is defunct at that point. I've told you, you have no justice, justice. You have just just us. It's them. Why isn't this brought out? I don't know. And that's just not part. I'm just that's just part of it. If all the people that are looking in. They could take a step back a little bit, even from their own interests, let's say in the Bundy case, or the Hammonds, or any of the, any other injustice, all the so-called, uh, or the, the victimless crimes, not just so-called, but the victimless crimes. If people would take a step back and then write a letter into the system and say, you know, that was, I don't care that you have a jury, uh, and, 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 and then here's the jury that was tainted by your process. I, I looked at that, and your, your process of jury selection is tainted. You do it by these attorneys that are persecuting people because they have a political agenda. Uh, and then you come up with, and you cause the taxpayers to pay money uh, that really, for victimless crimes, this, I think, breaches the mere appearance of impropriety and public service. I think it would be a decent starting letter if anybody would write it, and lots of you. 
that you start boring in on the standards that they've made for themselves, these occupiers, and you show that they're not holding up to it. And you start to at least engage this thing. And that's just, again, one one aspect of, of this major, major, it's just a racketeering organization from what I could tell, globally. Globally. And so it's, again, up to us. A lot of time on this. Research that you will, but what does that get us? Uh, get you knowledgeable at some point. And then, again, then we have the problem, is that knowledge actually true? Or is that just a bunch of the information they handed you to accept? You won't find that out until you start practicing out what you thought you knew. That All that gets shed. I'll just tell you, you just talk about shedding some skin here. You will shed a lot of that real quick. You'll find out real quickly. It's easy, though, to say, oh, I know this stuff and not do, because then you can sit smugly and arrogantly in all your knowledge. It's unproven, but you can claim to have at least a knowledge. And as I've showed you, you can have all the right knowledge even, in it, and, and again, wrongly applied, or incorrectly uh, applied, even if it's not wrongly applied. You have no intention, see, I say wrongly, but you may not have no intention to do wrong, but you incorrectly apply something. The correct information, incorrectly applied, is not something you want to do. It has the same problem. And so it's uh, you find all that out pretty quick, and a lot of people don't want. I think the I think you all know. I think you all know when you start to actually apply this stuff, start talking about how much you know, uh, how much all that uh, all that all works. When you start to apply it, I think you also know that you're going to have to come to the terms with the testing of what you thought you knew. I'm not immune from it. That's why I know about telling you. You find out really quickly. Although I had an insight somehow, I was guided. I'll tell you what, folks. It's uh, you also learn that. Uh, Knowledge comes, you're inspired. There's things that come to you that don't, don't, don't come to you any other way. And it gives you an insight on what path to follow. And early, 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 early on, I figured out what was going on was a bunch of noise that I had to be real careful on what I accepted. All the information wasn't quite right. There was always this, uh, this little glitch in the matrix. And I started to look for those, that those glitches existed, what they were, and those glitches, as I can confirm them to you today, would have been, as I would describe, a link in the chain of title to either a title, a proof of possession of a property, or as an evidence to prove a thing. These evidentiary chains, chains of evidence, uh, this is what you start looking for. And when I started to see that early, I was blessed early on to start paying attention. Don't run with the lemmings. Don't run with the wounded. Start to sit back and say, wait a minute now, there's a certain thing out there. Let me find out what that is. All these people that claim to know what they know, there's some problems and there's a disconnect in their logic. And you have to research the subject matter enough to see what that disconnect is. And then you put that where it belongs. You take the good and you discard, well, you don't discard the bad. You remember the bad because that's going to protect you in the future on what not to do. And so research as you will, but engage, folks. Find the wrong of one of those things I read and more. There's so much more. Those are the things that they tell you. I think a lot of that, in some regard, on the surface, is really a, a misinformation. Um, Again, telling you about Agenda 21 doesn't show you what the methods and processes are that put it in your face and destroy you with it. You can learn about Agenda 21. You won't know what, how it's being implemented. And again, the William Roberts, to his credit, telling you about it, but when it came time to understand what the thing that was working in the States or anywhere in the wor world is, that's not discussed in the Agenda 21 document. And so you may understand about Agenda 21. You may understand that they're controlling property and how they're doing and all this international imposition that the codes are no good and all this stuff and how they violate the law, actually. You won't know how they've done it. And you don't know how they're continuing to do it. And then when you understand how they've done it and how they're continuing to do it and you figure out how to circumvent, short-circuit that, all of a sudden, all that agenda doesn't mean anything. It's the evidence of their crime, then. And that's how subtly you flip this whole thing over. You don't know it's a crime until you see it, and then you understand how it's a crime and you expose it. The problem is that system that's been bringing it in is so well and so comprehensively in 
infesting us, invaded us, infiltrated us, and surrounded us, that there yet isn't enough mechanism in us to uh, help remedy that. It's, it's slow, but it happens, but it's not it very quickly. And it would be a lot quicker if we could get off the disinfo and start getting to the point. I'm seeing a lot of the stuff about the California fires. It's big. All of a sudden it came out about the directed energy weapons and how the fires were anomalous and all this. I saw another video last night. Uh, oh, this metal is anomalously de- de- destroyed. I look at the video, and I have to ask the question. I did ask the question. Does it, hasn't anybody ever seen the aftermath of a, ho- of a fire, a house fire? It's it's like these it's like everybody has an opinion and never had an experience in the world. If you've ever been involved in a house fire that was burnt the house to the ground, you will not see much different as to anything that goes on regarding a house fire. And then, as I was talking in the uh, Freedoms Network s- social network, they were coming back and witnessing what the videos were about the fires and that the firefighters weren't fighting, uh, that they were calling them wildfire. Assisted. Well, yeah, folks. If you go look at the the National Forest Fire Policy in 1995, it was started. You read that one; it's pretty nice and clean. There's not no amendments to worry about. They haven't changed it any. They just made it more more effectual since 1995. The 1995 fire policy is: you will live with wildfire, and you will live underneath this new code imposition. As I've I've explained all this before. And so these wildfires that seemingly burn only houses and not trees, folks, all that all that vegetation uh, is more fire resistant than you think it is. It's grown there for a long time. Your houses haven't. Your 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 na- your your connection to nature hasn't to understand how this works. It doesn't take a, a genius to figure a satellite uh, or super technology to f- have fire destroy stuff. And yet, when you look at the fire policy, it's made to become the initiator. And the policy is you will live with that because they're going to wild lands this whole place. So while everyone's focused on directed energy weapons or looking at a so-called anomalous features of how this fire, these fires went through, you're missing the point that the policy was set up back in 1995 to cause what's going on today, and you won't do anything to stop it. You'll be enamored by all the videos you see and all the stuff you never walked out to walk, look and see what happens in a, in a house fire, let alone hundreds of house fires. And, and so we could be knowledgeable about all this. It doesn't mean it helps us. It's certainly not going to help stop the nonsense. If I had a thousand people that understood the national forest policy and stepped into their counties and say, listen, this is not a plan. The, the, the bar they've set on this plan is so low that it causes the, the, the destruction of our property and the interference of our health, safety, and welfare, then you would be speaking in the language that they could do something about all this. And you would show how the national forest policy is the low bar and the obligation and duties of your counties as a higher bar, and you would set that higher bar. You wouldn't be discussing the uh, conjecture of a directed energy weapon which, if you had uh, worked on the policy down on the ground anyway, it wouldn't have had enough uh, enough energy to enough fuel to do anything with. And so, I, I mean, lots to talk about. I could go on and on. Where do you, what, what subject matter do you want to talk about that we whine about, folks? I just tell you that you're just focused on the wrong things. You have all this knowledge about the about a subject matter, but nothing uh, substantial that you can deal with. And that's why you don't deal with it. And I'm here to remind you that there's a way to do deal with it. Some things we may not be able to do, but there are tons of things that we can do something about. Will it take a bunch of people working together? I think it is now. How do I go from where that is to where I'm going to be going is interesting, right? <laughs> These tabs. I figure out what I'm going to do and I get off them. But uh, So, research as you will. Uh, but I'm asking people and have been asking, engage evolutionarily. The evolution is your knowledge and your application of your knowledge, not what you know. That's a, that's just an ego trip. And I think maybe, not to, I bet I won't even say the rest. Uh, there's just a lot of people that put out um, sensationalized knowledge. They do have the fact, maybe even 90%, but you know it's that last 10% that's the action part, and they all, everyone, everyone seems to fall short. And, and so, I, I don't know what more to say. I want you to do something. I want you to find that thing that you want to do, because I know... Um, you will expand yourself uh, way beyond what you thought you knew. And you'll find out how much, how little a lot of this stuff will matter until it matters. 
And that refines you down as well. You can really start focusing your energy. I don't have to keep track of juggling thousand pin of pins of understanding. I just got to do the one I'm dealing with. Now, I say that I say that for you. Uh, for me, I've got a whole still a hundred pins I'm juggling, but they're within my well, close to the edge, but they're they're within my capacity because I've reduced the common den- there's common denominators you'll find, and I can reduce the my, all the all the things to common denominators and deal with them from there, and then I only have to deal then with the particularity that's brought to me. And, and that's make, made it much easier to deal with a lot of these subject matters. And I think why I can come and just talk generally across the board, maybe not hit anybody particular, not give you any deep, deep insight, although I think I give you the deepest. If you haven't paid attention, you don't see that. But, I mean, the actual application side, there's a way to get there. But I come from there and work out. So at least I think I do, and I, I think when we resolve things, it's resolved from the foundation up, not from the subject matter down. And so, again, lots of discussion here, I think, uh, may sound maybe boring to most of you all, uh, but that may be because you're not involved. I think anybody who's listening to me has seen and heard uh, and done, they've done exactly my experience to you today. Uh, When I talk to people, this is what they do. The awarenesses that come to people, I've told you before, the people that do research for themselves and they tell me what they've found, I've been amazed at what they find. I don't have the time to go find it all. It sure is nice, though, to see in context and in proper interpretation uh, an ex- uh, something exposed within a state statute that really is an answer, a big answer. Like I've told you in one state, you know, it's a big deal, whether or not any of you all understand it, it's a big deal to see that no, that no suit shall uh, be maintained which shall set aside, cancel, annul, or otherwise interfere with a patent of the United States. That, that That's... That's huge with a Y. Huge, folks. I mean, you just don't get it if you haven't really seen it. Oh, and as it occurs to me to say, and I'll get off my tabs a little further, uh, again, I hear this repeatedly and not to direct it to anybody. I saw it again in the chat the other night. Uh, uh, The patent is not something you go for. It's not something you go for. It's something you just go get a copy of. It's already existent. And the only thing you have to do then is build the chain of title between that document that is there that you get a certified copy of and how you have the possession of the property that you're on back to it by the chain of evidence of the chain of title. It's already there. It's not something you don't go for the patent like you're like trying to uh, the college try or you have certain forms to fill out or something you write up. It's already there. You just go get it and then make your connection to it as an assignee. Okay, so I wanted to. So now let's go to the law. When you find out you can do that, and I tell you, there's a statute, and this should be in every state because these things are uh, tre- domestic treaties. These patents are domestic treaties that there is no suit that shall be maintained against uh, a patent that can interfere with it. I won't let, I won't, I'll let you rest on that and let you think about that. Let you think about that. Because I think that's just like beyond for what we are told today is supposed to be going on and the taxation and code impositions and the, the civil rights you get, the exactions of every kind. If no suit shall be maintained in uh, Title 42, Section 1981 says you shall have, you can have a, the, the status is you have the right to sue or be sued. Well, apparently not with a patent. Huh. So apparently you're not that status. Huh. Are you putting some of this together? I know some of you long listeners ought to be. But have you put it together that way is what I'm talking about. When you start to work with this information, this is the knowledge, real insight. I think it's what I say, the real insight of how the nuts and bolts of this works, that we are so oblivious to or have been denied because of these uh, authorita, uh, whether the whatever name, the military consequence, the imposition, the reptilians, I don't care who you call them, uh, the, that, that we've allowed this and it's all right there for us to see past it all. Now, again, the patent is not something you go for. All you do is get a copy of it. It exists. It's a request to the land board of your state. It might even be in the form of a state warrant, a state deed. Uh, That works as patent as well. But there's an originating conveyance of the public land to a private holding. 
that shall be forever not interfered with. It says it right in the document. So, those of you thinking that you're working, you have a lot of work to do to get a patent. If you have land, you're misinterpreting anybody else. You're not listening to me, and you're listening to other people who don't understand what the deal is. And then there's also a conversation going on, I understand, that says that the patent theory, the patent idea is merely theory, and that it doesn't hold water in the courts. Well, I just told you that, the, that there's a statute that says that no suit shall be maintained. If there's a patent in a suit, then the, the party didn't understand about it. And the subject matter that they're suing on isn't about patents, then, is it? And so that meme that's out there, that so-called knowledge, is incorrect. It may not be used in a certain capacity, but not at the point of it having it interfere with the conveyance of Congress. And I can even tr I can now trans uh, I can even uh, jump the chasm from property into commerce because it doesn't matter then if we acknowledge what the act was by Congress and the ratification of it by the president being a domestic treaty and that commerce has the only authority uh, Congress has the only authority in commerce amongst the states then they can't the states can't interfere with that patent even in commerce side and you got them again when they try to impose a commerce restraint. Distraint? I don't care what call you, what word you want to call it, and how depth you do the entomology. There is nothing that's supposed to interfere with this conveyance, and this is a whole other section and body of law. Once you understand that, you start getting what I was telling you about. This whole thing looks a whole lot more rich than what it was. I mean, real wealth starts to develop in here. It's not all these ideas and opinions. And I, I speak. I hear very few people speaking uh, toward any of this, and it only comes. And I think it's because people don't do the right thing. They, they don't understand to do the right thing. And you can even get lost in that thing. But, uh, again, I, I've learned to look for the, what I would call, tell you is savings clauses. Look for the uh, the little breaks uh, uh, of jurisdiction and authority over things. Look for the hesitations in the law to reach a certain level. Like I've explained to you, administrative delegation does not read, they do not delegate enough power in an administrative officer or hearings process or whatever to reach a thing such as a patent. And so you have a problem with uh, subject matter jurisdiction and, uh, and, and competency right off the bat because they don't aren't given the administrative side of this, which is most everything you know about in the world right now. The administrative imposition doesn't have the power to reach those things. And then we can turn around, I'll say it again, I mean, just to reference it back, look at what happened to the Bundys. Yeah, that thing is so screwed up, uh, nobody on all the Constitution, the people with knowledge in the Constitution don't even understand what they're looking at. They have no, no clue w what they're uh, looking at. And what bothers me was that the information that um, we I, I gave through my colleague to give to the, a lot of people there is really kind of falls on deaf ears. And I don't know what more to do with that one. But, you know, again, you could research until you think you know. And then you find and you get yourself in a, in a fight. You can go read a book about the Kung Fu. You be a Kung Fu master in the books and go get in a street fight, folks. Oh, you might prevail. You might be capable enough. But, you know, the odds that because you read the book doesn't mean anything in the reality. Oh, you can read about how to defend from five different fighters. Is that going to work in the real world? Like, you want to put yourself in that, that type of a scenario out of choice? So book learning is uh, one thing. Uh, the doing of it is a whole other thing. And then uh, then the specialty that we find out that they've been imposed upon is even a, a thing a, a different than all of that. And then the other subversion that comes in transparent to you is a thing even different than all that. And yet it's all figurable. You can figure it out and you can start to deal with it. But that's the point. You got to deal with it. Not my rule. So dealing with things. Uh, how do you defend yourself? There's another way to defend yourself. I'm talking about how you do it in the paperwork and all that and how to make letters and how to respond, how to press people, how to get the letters written that you start scaring them off, how to understand the liability conditions that you can start pressing people with the notices of liability when you find out what the real thing is. You just don't know about a thing. You know how to apply a thing. But there's another more physical thing, and we're talking about fighting. You can learn out of a book, or you can have to actually have to go do it. Um, part of your defense is, uh, in this country, United States of America anyway, 
was this right to bear and keep arms, and what was the purpose? But to defend yourself against the government itself. Should have been a warning. And here all everything falls and devolves below that, it seems to me. Otherwise, I mean, your antecedent right to, pre- to uh, pr- uh, provide for yourself a, 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 an arm is a good thing to go get food. So a lot of people foc- focused on the hunter thing, and it's not exactly what that's about. Not, not underneath the constitutional thing, uh, issue. But the, in the meantime, the bar associations and attorneys have figured out how to encroach upon these rights. And one of the things that they've said is like the, the right, right to, uh, in a way, you can hear, you can see the re- reality, the reason of it. But on the other hand, when you're talking about something as as uh, absolute as you being killed by government and your lack of ability to protect it, I don't know if that's a, this is actually a defense either. Uh, but like your First Amendment right, you can't yell fire in a theater, is applied to this mental capacity you have to own a gun, what they call a gun. Uh, I'm not so sure, but we I can see the rationale. You don't want crazy people with guns. I mean, I, I get that. Uh, but are they actually that crazy? And are they for that period uh, beyond the time or whatever all is an interesting problem uh, that must be mitigated. And uh, this comes up in a court case here. If you don't want to do letters, I guess you're going to be forced. Those of you that can't do letters are going to be forced someday to defend yourself, uh, whether it's by the mob outside the door that have been given rights, that the uh, SJW rights because uh, you just flew a funny colored uh, curtain and you get to be taken down like you do in South Africa. You get to be taken out and beat down. Uh, and then you uh, you decide you want to defend yourself, uh, well, that'll be made out law too, won't it? You won't be able to do that. So uh, this is the problem about this uh, Second Amendment, right, that we hear a problem uh, with the courts coming out to say, wait a minute now, because you're claimed to be mentally ill, it doesn't mean you lose that Second Amendment right. And so we're seeing, at least in this beginning of this case in Pennsylvania, uh, an interesting uh, crack in the porcelain of the absolute ability for the government to come in and say, oh, we get to take your right uh, to bear arms. And this is now pr- pressing upon what I tell you, uh, this, this eminent domain comes apparent in my mind, where it's just not the fact that the government can claim your property. There's a process and there's things that go on around that that are pretty high bar uh, levels of standards that the government has to meet. That in my uh, view of the law, uh, given the conveyances and the doc- and the uh, law of grants, and the restrictions on that, the government would be very hard-pressed to be able to beat unless they were just coming in and stealing. And that's just not lawful either. But even under this uh, dom- uh, this eminent domain, uh, this is the similar thing, that the right has to be proven, and it has to be effectual. It can't just be claimed. And it has to be claimed in a certain way. So here we're back to jurisdiction, authority, professing to be authority. Court finds short mental health treatment doesn't end gun rights. A federal court last week held that the involuntary emergency, and get all this, folks, you're going to have to use this, the, the involuntary emergency treatment of a Pennsylvania man for less than 24 hours did not trigger a lifetime ban on firearms. Now, this firearms is a loaded word. I've, I caution the, the, the interpretation of all of this. But the point is, let's just look at the firearm here. It's just any weapon to keep the bare arm the arm not the special firearm under federal control, or regulation, actually. Deciding the case in Alton Franklin, the United States District Court, another incompetent court, held that the brief history, uh, by the statute, folks, I'm just not talking opinion, you've heard me talk about this all the time, what a 28 U.S.C. is your judiciary code in the federal law, 28 U.S.C. section 88 to 133, I think it is. Go find uh, uh, the the Pennsylvania District Court, and you go tell me whether or not that's an Article Three court or, or a legislative or territorial court. You go tell me. Uh, deciding, and this is the same problem with Nevada and Bundy's, but anyway, it doesn't matter. People don't care. They just want to keep believing that there's a justice system. Deci- deciding the case uh, in the Alton case, the United States District Court held that his brief history of mental illness reported by the state did not square against the federal gun prohibitions on those who have been committed to mental institutions. So this in t- this is a, in bringing up a couple of very important things that the federal guidance r- can rule and it has a standard. It's not one that's misinterpreted. You better read these correctly. So if you apparently want to have a gun right, you better understand the powers that be who implement this, what they say. And once you understand that, then you can work out how what they say may be wrong as well, because this is also something you'll find. According to court documents, and there's a link when you get to the black edge, 2002 Franklin appeared at his local police station, quote, needing to talk to someone, close quote, 
In the aftermath of the recent breakup of, with 20 lacerations on his arms, he said he picked up as part of a drinking game with a friend. The officer he spoke to felt that Franklin posed a danger to himself or others, and a county official completed a warrant that the man be involuntarily admitted to a mental health facility for up to 120 hours. However, Franklin only remained hospitalized for less than 24 hours before he was released. Now, I'm wondering here, when you say someone filled out an official, filled out a warrant, if that's not going to be a, a, a false arrest or false de a detainment uh, and an assault as well, and that official is liable to him. But let's not, we're not, that's not the point of our subject matter here. Uh, since then, he has been uh, subject, uh, not, not been subject to a mental health order and went on complete on to complete a bachelor's degree, earn a paralegal certification, and work as a corrections officer for the state of Kentucky. Nonetheless, in 2013, he was advised that he was a prohibited firearms possessor with an active file in the FBI's National Instant Criminal Background Check System, stripping him of his gun rights due to the time he spent in the hospital more than a decade previously. Challenging the Pennsylvania record in the court, county court in 2015, a judge found in favor, noting that he, quote, no longer suffers from the mental health conditions that was the basis of the original civil commitment. Now, understand what they just did. He went into the county court. I don't know about Pennsylvania's court system, but there's also county courts, not just state courts. And the county itself could have a court. A county government could have a court inside there. That's what we find in the West. And it's kind of an unused type of a system that we've learned to start to use. Uh, but anyway, going on to the point here, the judge finds he's no longer a mental health condition subject. Uh, nonetheless, the ATF maintained Franklin was still prohibited from possessing firearms under the federal statute, even while the state said he wasn't. To this, the federal court took exception last week, saying he was never, quote, adjudicated as a mental defective, close quote, or quote, committed to a mental institution, close quote, as it applied to federal law. So the ATF federal steps in and stops him, and the court comes back and says, no, you've misinterpreted this, ATF. So isn't that a deprivation of rights without due process? Oh, well, we can go further here, but let's not. Let's keep on going. This is all what you have opportunity to do when it brought, it's handed to you as a, as a defect and, a, and an oppression you have the right to kind of go after all this if, if, you, if you choose so. This guy's just trying to keep his job, uh, but it, gets, it can go deeper than this. The decision to submit Mr. Franklin, in quote here, to a 120-hour involuntary mental health examination was made by a police officer, an unspecified officer in the county's administrator's office, and a physician, not a court, board, or commission, said United States District Judge Kim R. Gibson, Gibson in his decision enjoining the government from using a 2002 involuntary emergency treatment against him. Enjoining is this extraordinary remedy that stop, that can stop the government from its oppressive acts, folks, is what I've been talking to you about. Uh, this was an injunction against this, against the ATF. And uh, what I wanted to point out here, did you miss the trick that I really have a question about whether or not this was a constitutional decision? Let me go back and read what he just said there near the end. That the examination was done by a police officer, an unspecified officer in the county administrator's office, and a physician, not a court, board, or commission. Let me focus you on the point, not a court, board, or commission. Uh, let me put the word court here, because when I first read that, I, I slipped by. So well, that, maybe that's a judicial court. In fact, don't we have things like traffic court, code enforcement courts? Those are not judicial. And when, they are, when that word was tied by commas to board or commission, when I say board or commission, what should re, re, those of you that have been doing study of administrative law, what does this mean when they have this class of, of three tied together, court, board, or commission? Board and commission reminded me directly of what an agency of the state is as defined by the Administrative Procedures Act of a state, that boards and commissions are state agencies. Well, that means your local county council board, your county com, uh, county commissioners are all agents of the state. That's executive state 
branch, folks, not judicial. So my look at this when I saw that, and I was I was kind of tripped by this a little bit here. Still haven't quite worked it out even, but there this federal judge, a territorial judge, USDC, looking into a state action, said it wasn't the officers that were may have had uh, uh, right uh, employees of the state. It was a board, a commission, or a court, a, tra- a code court, a special court that had the right to take your gun rights if they claim for so in an involuntary sen- sen- sense. So they're claiming that this decision was a, a big deal, that it was a, well, one, it was a, in speaking to the legal intelligence, Prince said the ruling speaks to the constitutionality of stripping a person of their gun rights without due process and now sets the foundation for challenging Pennsylvania state prohibition on those very grounds. But what is it challenging? It's not actually going to challenge those things where they have now determined that administratively in the executive branch can deny you of your gun rights in Pennsylvania. It doesn't say here subject to judicial review. The court, they say, in the term court, board, or commission doesn't mean a judicial court or a a court of judicial branch competency. And so I'm not so sure about this. I know what the system's going to do with it, and they'll just kind of ignore it. Just, oh, okay, well, you can't you can't be taking someone out that way. Uh, but this is still a reinforcement of the administrative, executive administration of your life, as I see these words. Did the judge make a mistake? Possibly. Did he not look so deeply on this matter? Possibly. And that, that, but the, here's, that's the other point. Now you have that as a question, don't you? That the law was not actually determined because there's still outstanding questions. In actuality, if I saw this decision, uh, and I've, I've, done, I've done this before, a lot of people don't like to do it, I would have probably challenged, if I was the so-called winner, if I was the recipient of the, uh, of the award and the, my adversary was enjoined, I may even challenge this decision for its lawfulness that I could be involuntary committed by a commission board or code court. And they would have to clean that part up. But that's me. That should be you, I would think. But that that's what I see here. For those of you that may have seen this, uh, this issue, uh, and it's important to you, I would take a different take a bit on it, as I seem to normally do anymore, not for the sake of being different, but I, I think you can hear there's some very serious incursions done by so-called judicial, those that purport to be judicial, USDC court is not, but they're administrative, but this is what they do and what territory were they reviewing over again, what permit does your gun rights come back that's in commerce as well now the other aspect is that this mental health is your uh, health, safety, welfare morals, the police power but that's still an executive function if we do that as a takings or we do that as some sort of police power, there still has to be a hearing. That is still reviewable by a court, but that's not what this decision says. So I didn't get the whole case, just reading from a report here. They didn't find it important enough to say so. That statement right there where they had court, board, and commission should have been stated right after that subject to judicial review. And I don't see that there caution folks uh, so now what what's important about having a, a gun and it's not the answer to everything and maybe you wouldn't want to use it in every instance notwithstanding you may have one uh, that uh, here's a report from last week a pretty a pretty interesting attack on the Bitcoin uh, if you would have had a gun maybe you could have protected yourself against this and those of you that are in into being part of the exchanges for these new currencies so cryptocurrency so-called uh, may want to pay attention. Ukraine kidnapper, kidnappers that we heard last week had picked up a uh, an ex- someone who was re- a part of an, a crypto coin exchange for a ransom, and they uh, they released that hostage after someone paid a million Bitcoin dollars ransom. Kidnappers in Ukraine have released an employee as a UK registered cryptocurrency exchange after getting more than one million or seven hundred fifty thousand pounds in Bitcoin. As a ransom, the ad- advisor to the Ukrainian Interior Minister, minister told you Reuters. I uh, won't go into more of it. Here's a here's another attack, another way for people to attack 
uh, and question uh, make, cause a question onto these exchanges. Um, people know that are, the pirates in the world know where the real value is, and they're willing to do things. So that this is a message to us to be careful. Apparently, this exchange didn't suffer anything, but you see that there's another vulnerability into those that run them, given they're not the state. And so this is I want to give this up. Remember what I was saying. They're going to they'll legalize these, but they're going to be state-run currencies and all the rest. And you might be able to deal with them, but you're going to be up for not not dealing in the cryptocurrency. You're going to be up for the value of the exchange to tax you and be regulated in that regard. And don't forget, it makes it seems to be a small thing. You're going to need to make records and keep books, remember. So that becomes another obligation. But I tell you, you nobody seems to challenge correctly. They seem to get in and want to take the tax code to task, not, not realizing that that's not where you don't fight from inside their arena. But at any rate, that's another opinion apparently that no one wants to accept in me. Uh, it's not an opinion. It's the law, but uh, it's okay. Uh, this is what happens. This is why I see we're going down the tubes uh, because we're uh, we're just so uh, knowledgeable about really nothing, uh, and we don't know. We don't want to believe that, but we believe that our knowledge, uh, it, it, our knowledge uh, that we believe we have, uh, trumps everything. It circumvents all other things. Uh, so moving on in this Ukraine uh, vulnerabilities and things that are going on and the shifting and the adjusting. And I told you how this thing was going to work down uh, months and months and months ago, if not a year. I don't even know how long ago now. Be, be careful of these digital currencies. Uh, like I told you, I'm, I'm up on what they can do. I really am supportive of really, say, the uh, production-oriented coins like the dope coins. And I think I heard Germner saying that they, he's involved with like the bonger or something. I think those coins have a validity because they're, they're, they can be based in production value uh, more than just electrons. They uh, would actually represent have be a, a, a cons- they would be a representative of work do- literal work done in producing something, and so I'm I'm partial to that part for that reason. But the rest I'm not so sure, and partly because I, the writing's on the wall of where this this is going in the direction that we now find further proof of the uh, centralization of this, the acceptance by the governments into this. The global structure is accepting of it in this report here. Bank of England plots its own Bitcoin style digital currency. As I told you, it's not going to worry about the name. It's the protocol. It's the system. A bit, Bank of England, this is a big deal here. Uh, this is the crown. Uh, so watch it. But uh, they're moving into the plot its own Bitcoin. Uh, the gunpowder plot keeps coming to mind in this uh, this Jesuit mask that's been now promoted all over the world as something anonymous. It's pretty fascinating. But Bitcoin England plots its own Bitcoin-style digital currency. Uh, There's a report about it. Uh, The Bank of England can uh, green light its own Bitcoin-style digital currency as early as 2018. A research unit set up at the bank and is investigating the possible introduction of cryptocurrency linked to sterling. So they're legitimizing this whole thing, as I said that they would, but it's centralized in the government systems. And the government, we know, doesn't like competition. So be aware. Be, and I, you know, again, as I say, the production, like pot coins or the marijuana business, who doesn't have, the government doesn't fund this, doesn't, oh, the federal government, the United States at least, maybe that's ch- different in Canada, that's going to ex- boost that up there for the for their monetization. But they're not monetized and they can't do things in the United States, but they're they're accessible to tax. A, 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 a cryptocurrency gets around that that blockade. You know that's why Venezuela is doing it. That's why Korea does does it. It's the reason why it actually works. But it's based in something. They can always point to a value if they do it that way. And they they can also point that they're the outlaw being oppressed by the government. They're in a better position there. It's like I said, be careful to jump off into recreational cannabis. Maybe stay in the medical for the time being while you get that industry its own feet, its own currency, based in some real tangible things. And you just saw the proof of that when the Bank of England ties their digital currency to sterling. This is just going to go cashless, folks. This is all the object is. Technocracy is right on the door, and it's going global fast, really, really fast. I've told you about that. Uh, So to me... We see another connection. Uh, if we think like Russia's on the outside of this or China, no, they're all involved. I don't even know where to, how to, to place them any different. Uh, Russia, right along, along the lines with this, at the same time, Russia plans national biometric database starting next year. 
Now remember, we have real ID and all that stuff in the United States of America. This is nothing new, but I want you to point out what they're connecting it to and why it ends up being important. Russia will uh, get a countrywide biometric database for financial services starting next summer, the central bank said. Folks, if I wait a week, these guys, this isn't even news. How fast they're rolling this out. I'm kind of excited here. Uh, how fast the demise is coming. <laughs> and we just sit as crickets. And they're making bread out of us here now in Finland. You thought it was Soylent Green, not Soylent Crickets. The system will expand access to banking by letting people open accounts without having to visit a branch. And is key milestone in digitizing financial services the Bank of Russia said in a statement. The regulator, the regulator said that data would only be stored with individuals' consent. Legal changes needed before the system passed this month. Your consent's going to be get, gotten how, folks? Your consent's going to be gotten because you can't buy anything without it. You're going to be hard-pressed to have a system in place to be able to buy it. They'll base it in sterling. They'll base it in the ruble, but you ain't going to have a ruble or a sterling. Pound, whatever the heck it is. You're gonna, your consent's gonna be because you can't get, and you're gonna go plug in. So be cautious of all this. But here it is, folks. Uh, the, to me, this is big vulnerabilities. This is the system setting up. They're creating their own to outlaw uh, or be able to control the other at exorbitant levels, right? So this is the thing, and I told you a long time ago, watch out, they're going to have your uh, connection to the Internet and the financial systems. You're, you're just a financial beast of burden. I've talked about all this. Again, you can research all this yourself. You'll know it. Now, well, what are you going to do about it? Well, you've got to keep some, start doing some, keeping some distance, it seems, uh, but they're making it harder and harder and harder to do that. And I told you that pretty soon all this connection to the Internet is going to be made so small, they'll fit it uh, inside of the credit card they call your driver's license, your ID, your biometric card identity, whatever the heck they want to make it, and then smaller than that, okay? It's going to go smaller than that. But they already have the tech, I think, I said at the time years and years ago, to put it in, the, in a space the size of uh, the, the card that they call your, your driver's license or a credit card. Well, here's now a proof of the fact of the miniaturization of the things that the technocrats need. World's smallest mobile phone is smaller than a USB drive, lighter than a coin. Uh, and I don't know about a digital coin, but because uh, those are electrons. But world's smallest mobile phone is smaller than a USB drive. It's about the size. Of, it's actually shorter than your thumb, folks. Uh, now, when you look at this thing, it has its pads and all. It's so cute, folks. So cute. But you'll notice it just has this little digital readout. It doesn't have the screen. It's so small you can't see anything. But see, they don't need the screen when they want you connected by your tiny, cute little phone that fits on the end of your keys. It fits in your pocket. It's so easy to lose. We'll give you more. And we'll do tracking systems. In an age when phablets and big screen smartphones are more popular than ever. More popular is us plugging in. One manufacturer is swimming against the tide. <laughs> the way they push this stuff, folks. <laughs> you groupers. Oh, man. One manufacturer is swimming against the tide by trying to make its mobile phones as tiny as possible. Their latest achievement, a phone that's smaller than the average human thumb, your little animals, your monkey thumbs, Posable thumb monkeys. That's what your prehensile tails were nothing on a thumb. Uh, lighter than a metal coin. Not lighter than a crypto coin because that's what's going to be inside this phone. You have gobs of them at some point. The Zanco Tiny uh, T1 is being advertised as the world's most, uh, the world's smallest mobile phone. It can fit in the tiniest of pockets, can store up to 300 numbers in a phone book, and makes an adorable yet practical gift. And just in case you're wondering, Zanko claims uh, that uh, it is indeed a fully functional talk and text mobile home, mobile phone allowing users to make and receive and exchange text calls. I'm telling you, folks, you're going to have that. You're going to cross that. Uh, you're going to jaywalk, and they're going to tell you right on there that they've just taken your account or you'll be arrested before you get across the site for not having anything in your account. You ain't worked hard enough this week to afford that. 
How's that, folks? Now, here it is. They're telling us it's right there. I told you this stuff is going to be on the, uh, it's going to, it's so small. I told you it was already so small. They're just not telling us. Now they're rolling it out. It's so cute. They're actually going to use Kickstarter to help them along. Uh, they get the buy-in they need. Uh, they're working on even smaller, apparently. And the point is, is they don't, they're just looking for you to buy, have this and connect into their their system, their financial beast of burden system, uh, the one that you will not be able to buy anything un- until you have this system, the one that you will consent to have to buy because you ain't smart enough to herd up. To, you herd up all the time in all the wrong ways. You won't herd up together to come together to say, no, no, we're not going to want to do that. As I've told you, the examples of why and how that can work is in India where it's not working. I told you they're going to work on it. This thing's going to be handed to everybody, and it's going to have its own pre-wallet on, and everything else is going to be done for you. And you will only be able to do dealings in there, uh, things that are attached to so-called pound sterling or FRNs or the other fiat currencies, as I told you, that, that this, this uh, crypto system is. The different one will be the one based in production. I'm, I'm certain of it. Whether or not that can, whether or not, and I haven't looked at it that close, whether or not it has the enough, it could have enough uh, shielding because of that and the lack of support by the government for something that's granted they do, I think that's the shield. I don't know if it's be enough. It, it would take a lot of people understanding that. Then it will be enough. It won't be like I hear all these pot growers, oh, well, I want to know about my, my water rights. And then they make the invent, well, I'm doing pot because I'm doing some uh, some religious uh, uh, experience thing, and this is what I need. No, stop that nonsense. Go to your water rights. Go to the in-ground water rights and go to the law there. Stop all this uh, trying to work within what the, you thought you had a religious right to this stuff. It's all conditionable now. There's only going to be one religion anyway. But that doesn't work that way. Not only one water right folks. There's everyone you can claim and have a right to claim, and there's not going to be a way for the government to get at it unless you do it. They, they do it by the lies that they've been presenting, and you will forget that there's not supposed to be a suit maintained against those grants. Where's the common knowledge of that? I know everybody that would go through that research list that I pointed out today can, can tell me all about that stuff, and they don't know the basic rights, their basic property rights in the country they live in and how to defend them. It's fascinating to me at, at one level. But here it is, folks. Something so small it'll fit on the almost on the head of a pin. Here it comes. It's right at the end of your thumb. It's big enough it would, would take it's taking up less space than that credit card or that driver's license, that real ID that already has the de- technology to do exactly what they're doing. And it don't need a screen. They don't need a screen to tell you to go show up somewhere to turn yourself in. But here here's the here's the whole point about what I've been telling you is coming. It's it's right here. The miniaturization, the accessibility, it's coming in the news, the notice to us, um, and then we get this. Hackers could sense your phone PIN, P-I-N, uh, using its uh, sensor data. Uh, these always intrigue me to no end. It's what the ingeniousness of hackers. Again, this vulnerability that we have, uh, and I was wondering, well, how the heck are they doing that? How are they taking all the sensor data uh, that's in ba- built into these phones? I mean, really, why do they have all this Five cents. You have more sensors, uh, more sensors in this thing than I think they have in any uh, in, in any other airplane, uh, you know, commercial airplane. Uh, they have all this stuff in. I mean, in, in, a, in a private airplane, they have all this stuff that you would find in, in professional stuff, uh, military hardware. Why do they have all these sensor pro- proximity sensors and gyroscopes and accelerometers? Why, folks? Oh, I know they're tying them to apps that use them, but that's the cover. Why is because they need all this information. Well. Uh, it's pretty interesting hackers have figured out how to take all the sensor data and figure out your PIN number. And I go, how the heck would they do that? Well, it was pretty interesting. They they took a computer and had people, uh, lots of people, punch in to a phone their PIN numbers. And they recorded how that happened. And they recorded the outputs of all the accelerometers and everything when you push the button. And by that data, they could configure, by all the input data, they can figure a signature for which number you, or the, the example, the, um, the, the high probability of which number you pushed by the inputs from all those, uh, those, those, exam, those, uh, in, those sensor inputs. And they were able to raise the level of, uh, of, uh, 
uh, accuracy to 99.5%. And how does it do it? Well, when you push on a 9, it, it, it registers different than when you push the 1 or the 5 or the 4. And those subtle differences out of all the sensors, they could figure out, create a signature for each number you pushed. And so... All this stuff is being used against the against you. Your PIN number is one of the protective numbers for your accounts, folks. Your 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 cashless life is vulnerable to all this. A quick suggestion I may have, though I can't prove it. Maybe you should, whenever you do your PIN numbers now, because you don't know which one of these programs has been programmed in. You don't know which ones the NSA has got in, or what Apple has agreed to, or Google, or any of these guys who've already have this program. You maybe uh, put your phone uh, down on a table and make it and hold it and and, and you got to and cover the, the the camera because it looks like it looks at the shadow that your hand places as well so cover the camera hold it down don't let it move and then then push your buttons as gently as you possibly can that, that's what we have to start doing uh, but anyway pr- pretty ingenious uh, evil genius to figure out how to hack your phone get your pin number to get into your accounts another digital v- vulnerability i'm talking they're going to raise the price of things and uh, the, and bitcoin has been coming up they've been saying how cheap these interactions are going to cost how easy it is to get a uh, to get interactions done so much cheaper than everybody everywhere else you would ever do a banking or financial services transaction Folks, uh, here's the evidence that that may not be the case, especially when they get everybody on and there's no competition. Uh, Bitcoin is eating itself. This is on uh, Cryptogron.com. Uh, I dot com yes a uh, bitcoin has uh, become utterly terrible to use. Low confirmations and high fees are insane. They're already talking about fees that are at 41 uh, with a record high of 55 dollars uh, per transaction. So. Here's the other thing that starts to come in. They may promote you in. Remember, they did this with all bank accounts. Oh, come in and get the toaster. Oh, come in and get the uh, the 25 uh, ducats that they're going to come and get the set of the flowers. Oh, you can have a $25 rebate. All these inducements to get in to get your account. Oh, free checking for a year. A uh, free checking for underneath a certain amount. But then they, once you get in, now they go through this change like you do everywhere else. We can change this as we will. And they do. And so here's the, another caveat uh, to this cryptocurrency uh, problem. Uh, of It's just a transfer, and it's actually going to cost you more. It may not. They may give these things away. The transaction fees will be waived. That means that they're not there, not not there. They're still there. They're just waived, and that they're going to be brought in any time that they want. But here was another thing, and not only are there all the other vulnerabilities of this cashless system, uh, making it so easy for you to have it and plug in. Uh, here are the costs that they will claim is they will tell you that if you listen carefully they're saying it costs them less but when you want the service that you consent into because there ain't any other game in town it's going to cost you more like everything that happens in technocracy or things smart it's austerity and when you get in austerity they have you by the nose and you agree to it walking in and I'm asking you to see that for the for the transparency you don't see quite yet and figure out what you're going to do about that. We got to do start doing that thought now and do action now. Have a have a separate system working. I don't know what's going to happen like with production based coins. I actually thought of one for mining, okay? So this is not even outside my mind. I'm actually encouraged by the pot coin because it touches things of production. But how long that can last and how long people are going to be not, or whether or not people will be as knowledge as I think I need, and people need to be where I think it, it needs to be discussed and not making an argument, but make it a fact of the obstruction of the government to allow granted things uh, that they don't have a right to intrude. That it's no different than the uh, prohibition against the maintenance of a suit and interference. Uh, that is the kind of thing you're looking for. That may be sufficient, but if there's only myself that actually understands this, it's going nowhere, and all this stuff is going down into control. It's going to be regulated into control. It's going to cost a lot to do it, whether that's immediately or after the fact when they use it and all this data they're getting to fabricate a violation. And we're getting to the point now, just the mere fabrication of an assertion is plenty to get you affect your life uh, in very, very uh, serious ways. So we have another vulnerability. Uh, this is comes out in a different way, but you again, we're talking about. I was saying you don't fill the bill 
They'll come after you or they'll flick your switch when they don't agree with you. Your life's going to be tied to all this, as hackable as it is. Uh, that's the hackers. But I'm talking about the inside. The inside job is is already in. What do you got in your wallet, folks? Intel inside. They tell us. It's all there. Intel is inside. What are you going to do against all this? So how are you going to protect against, uh, if, whether it's a hack of an exchange, a hack of your system, the interference or the hacking of, of your of your of your inputs in order to get into your accounts or the government flipping the switch we see the evidence that this happens right this week if we didn't think about it before this is now proof it happens facebook says it is and and from where folks you have to understand the the shifting zyocentric shift going on in all of this don't don't misunderstand the, the name zuckerberg tells us what the allegiance is going to be, and we see it all here, folks. Facebook says it is deleting accounts at the direction of the United States and Israeli governments. Now, what when you when you are on the outs with the United States or the Israeli governments in the fu- near future, uh, do you think that they can remove or accounts or just a, just steal them, just take them? Absolutely. Here's the evidence of it. All these big. Uh, uh, these big internet uh, companies are involved. In September of last year, we noted the Facebook representatives were meeting with the Israeli government to determine which Facebook accounts of Palestinians should be deleted on the ground that they constituted incitement. The meetings called for a presiding over by one of the most extremist and authoritarian Israeli officials, pro-settlement justice minister Ayelet Shaked, uh, came after Israel threatened Facebook that its failure to voluntarily comply. Where have you heard about voluntary compliance, folks? That's your tax code. You think we're talking about these kinds of impositions? Yeah, that's your civil rights. The exactions of every kind and no other. Law, folks. It's already law in the books of the United States. 42 U.S.C. 1981. I don't go far from that because that's what your life is centered around. It's all about financial constructs and your control. Remember 28 U.S.C. 3002? That's where they show anytime you deal in financial constructs, the United States is a corporation for all of those of you listening for that and think that's your rally flag. That's just a status, and that's how you start to do. Now that you know that, how are you going to use it is my question, and there's a way to approach that. Came after, let's go and read on, came after the Israeli threatened to face book that its failure to voluntarily comply with Israeli deletion orders would result in the enactment of laws requiring Facebook to do so upon pain of being severely fined or even blocked in the country. Wow, what a bunch of lies all there, but pains, punishment, penalties, fees, fines, and taxes, and exactions of every kind and no other. I don't think I missed but three in that list that they just said Facebook would be subject to. And they're not even a country, folks. This is all the fabrication. How many weeks have I been talking about this? You have to understand what's going on in the world. There's a veneer of a non-authority that's becoming authority beyond all others. I don't, I can't, the terror that that wreaks in me at some point, what do you do about that? We're just talking about some inert entities uh, that have force and effect in the world that respond to each other. And that's a setup, too, because they're both complicit with what's going on to move this forward anyway. So what happens in the future if it's not Palestinians, folks? I said we all live in an open-air prison. I've been telling you that for this for years. I don't care where you live. It's just more obvious in Gaza. We all live in an open-air prison. When they decide which one of you doesn't deserve to be uh, have an account, how are you going to stop that? I want you to seriously consider these points. And how did we get there? We let the poly- the method to work, but we didn't stop it where we could. And there's no amount of discussion I'm going to have in the future that's going to change that when we don't. Here's the evidence of this force and effect on a global level with players that are actually fraudsters. A political ideology only is doing this. As, I t- as I've said it, I mean, I don't know what else. No one's come back to show me different. Uh, th- this Jerusalem thing is the setup. It's the extension to, sh- to try and prove a thing that doesn't exist. And it, uh, I just tell you, two wrongs don't make a right, folks. Okay? Even if I give the Jew the, uh, the, the territory of its, fa- of its motherland, the fatherland, the homeland, the ancient land, it only extended to Bethlehem, Judah, the tribe. That's it. 
We're not talking about Israeli. We're talking about Israelites at that in that jurisdiction, in that thought, in that thought, in that subject matter, in the proofs. Not Israelite. It's they say they they truncate it. They abuse the term. So this is all a big falsehood. And these people are showing you they are going to rule the connections in the world, and they are attached to finances and your ability to speak and everything else that you might need. If you don't think that you're living in open-air prison, you better rethink about what I'm just saying here, about what Israel and the United States is doing to focus on a global company in the Internet that is also going to be tied to your global financial structures as well. When you don't, we don't want you to eat, you don't. You don't have power, you don't. You know, I was talking about, and, and, and I have to say that uh, Ron uh, Stevens uh, over there at UCY right uh, on Sunday, he, he made a great, he did a good explanation of the Soylent Green and exposing the sustainable development in there, the austerity, the constraint of power, the fact that everyone lives in the streets, the fact that you don't have enough power because they constrain you to not have it, you don't know what hot water is, you don't know what meat is, you don't know any, all the things that sustainable development, Agenda 21 is putting on this place globally. And uh, I want you to now look in the United States and look at all over California, all the homeless in the streets taking over. They don't have hot showers, they don't have electricity, they got nothing. You're seeing the movie play out, folks. So don't think it's too far away, and don't think you're too far away from being right there. You don't have the right to th- the right stuff. You're going to be excised from uh, your life, and it's going to be around these digital services that you just show. You just know now. Here, Russia is already in the game, on the job, and by next year or this coming year, two days from now, it starts that they, it starts to implement this national national uh, leash. The United States already has it. They're having trouble because of the way it's situated in the states. Uh, but I've told you there's a commerce connection to that in two levels. The real ID is tied to commerce through what motor vehicles department. So you start understanding what I've been telling you. You start to have a word in your mouth on how you start to approach how you're going to avoid that. Not evade it. Avoid it. So on this global thing where the United States now come, Israel's now using the concurrence of the United States, two wrongs trying to make a right over in Jerusalem. They're saying, well, the United States, you corporations, the United States, the United States is the policy to agree to our, our, our brutality, our genocide. And so you can't deny it. You see how this starts to work, I hope, folks. And up pops uh, another thing that's happened out of the United States through Trump. Uh, 15 minutes of Jerome Corsi's Twitter. It just came through, I, I think this came through uh, Real Liberty Media's Twitter account. Uh, the, the top story uh, bot, I think he's got there, that just keeps putting information out. Uh, White House announced President Trump signed proclamation declaring uh, National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month. I hereby declare national emergency to deal with the threat. So they just declared a national emergency right in front of everybody's face. This guy, Trump on uh, national slavery and uh, trafficking. And you go read the EO, and it says serious, serious human trafficking. And I'm looking at that saying, why only serious? And what about the human trafficking that's going on in the United States? The United States decides something, and all of a sudden now we're going to focus on it. However asinine it seems to be, however hypocritical it seems to be, however incomplete it seems to be. And everybody's jumping on, oh, we're finally going to go after human trafficking. Look, there's already laws on the books against this. Why aren't they, why isn't there any prosecutions again with it in the country? When you go read the EO, it's for outside the country. And then he writes another EO, this guy, Trump. I really have trouble, you know, I told you we have a small mouse hole of possibility, and we've gotten some, but it never really goes far enough. It's fallen short in so many ways, and so much credit's taken for what's going on. And you get the crumbs, and you think the crumbs, uh, you know, it's like you were eating a pilot cracker, and then they hand you a saltine, like I told you before, and you go, num, num, oh, the salt tastes so good. This is the best cracker I've ever had. And all you're getting is a saltine cracker instead of a pilot cracker. That's what they're doing here. That's what's going on. And until people see that, uh, like I say, the shortfall with the Bundy issue, and I keep repeating because it's our, our, our first thing we can see how this shortfall works 
Uh, but, uh, okay, executive order. United States decides something else. Uh, n- uh, Trump executive order targets Clinton-linked individuals, lobbyists, and perhaps Uranium One. And uh, the Trump administration quietly issued an executive order last, well, quietly, I suppose, to be like a secret thing. See, this is all just nonsense, uh, uh, which allows the freezing of the United States housed United States housed assets belonging to foreign individuals and entities deemed serious human rights abusers was about that bill. The other EO that they issued was about the people that are doing the investments and doing these other things on the mineral, the natural resources together. They talk about foreign individuals or entities deemed serious human rights. What about just human rights abusers? I guess the not so serious ones are, are, are not included here. And the internal, the domestic human rights abusers are okay as well, I guess. Correct, folks? And that was what I tweeted out. I said, I suppose the not so human, tra- not so serious human trafficking is okay by this. And my question, folks, did I you go read these these articles, these EOs, these executive orders? Uh, did I and again National Human Trafficking Month? I mean, come on, it's not taking any action. Uh, just, oh, we're going to take an awareness and we're going to sort of watch the crime. Uh, did I miss the part? Uh, on the last two EOs, Serious Trafficking National Resource Interference, which says that they are cleaning up their own yard first, going after the government people within the states committing the same crimes, is my question, folks. Do we look at this and we go, oh, Trump is doing great work. Oh, he's going after human trafficking. Or do we recognize that it's not really doing anything of the sort? It's just another cover. And if we aren't recognizing that this and not calling this part out, why? What are we accepting and allowing that we just make a, oh, we'll just do a recognition against human trafficking. We'll just let it happen, but that's okay. Oh, child abuse across the states in the CSD. Oh, we'll just, that's okay. That's It's domestic. We don't talk about our own dirty laundry. We're going to go meddle in the nations, other people's nations. Now, concurrently, both, I, I can see it. But one over the other, I don't think so. Th- that's is a, just a cover. And everyone who's going rah, 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 uh, MAGA, please, stop. Stop. You're, you're, ins- you're just as insane as the other side. Stop it. You're not helping a thing. You're, you're leading us down the, f- the road a little bit further. It's the crumbs you're thrown. It's not the, the fulfillment of, of what we would expect to live amongst in our better way. And if you don't think that the government means you harm, and if you haven't read Title 50, let me remind you, about, remind you all. That wasn't with a D now, just remind. Remind you all. But the government has the capacity and will decide to harm you. What would be the reason why a government would allow this? A federal ban on making lethal virus viruses is lifted. If you haven't read Title 50 United States Code and read it closely, you never understood the threat against you. And I told you all this time that what the government will do elsewhere, it will do against you here. Title 50 told me that. I didn't. I, I actually told it to you backwards. What the government will do here to you, they're willing to do everywhere else, certainly, and they're doing it. Should not be okay with you. But now, why would you lift a ban on making a lethal viruses? But it's happened. Federal officials on Tuesday ended a moratorium imposed three years ago on funding research that alters germs to make them more lethal. Well, it was put on three years ago, folks. Did you miss it? That means that they were able to do it before the before the embargo, the um, the moratorium. And that's in the law. And isn't that your civil rights? You're going to pay pains and punishments and penalties wherever they want you, whatever they get you to cons- force your consent voluntarily. If you don't start getting this, how they figured you out so easily, uh, you're, you're missing it, and you won't have a mind to, to do it. It's, why, it's the same problem here with why they don't want you to understand why the government, the United States, all the governments, do not want you to know about torture, uh, uh, torture techniques. Because when you start putting your mind toward them, you can, you can fortify yourself somewhat. Now, certainly, you, you know, there's a limit, but. It makes you so much more in your knowledge of it and then your addressment in your mind and then maybe understanding how to deal and what you might have to do to resist. You become resistant. You're, when you 
know of a thing, you have an ability to, to do something about it. And this is the same point. If you don't know what they can do, you don't see the, 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 the harm transparently that you're looking through that can come through on you, uh, you're missing the entire thing. Title 50 sat there to tell us the government will harm you. And they've given itself, these people in the government, have given themselves license to do it. There was a moratorium, meaning they could do that up until the moratorium for these lethal viruses. Now it's been lifted again. Why? Some scientists are eager to pursue these studies because they may show, for example, how bird flu may, could mutate to more easily infect humans and could yield clues to making a better vaccine. You know, folks, that's not what it's going to be used for. The military picks that up as soon as they figure that out. If it's not put underneath uh, the cover of that immediately. If the money that when they're given to do this, they're not underneath a non-disclosure order to begin with. Critics say that the researchers risk creating a monster germ that could escape the lab and seed a pandemic. Well, I'm not worried about the pandemic. That proves that it's made up. It proves that the researchers are only focused on the stuff that's made up because it's not going to be an epidemic. It's going to be a novel, exactly what it says. It's going to be a made-up, lethalized virus. Why would you do that? You don't do that as a normal people. You do that when you're a people that are a warring people. Now, I don't know how many more Israeli companies are going to fire up in the United States to do this, but you're going to find them probably pretty prevalent about all this as well. Uh, enough talked about this. They don't care. They've lethalized the doing of these viruses now. Lifted a moratorium that said they were doing it before. For all y'all folks that didn't know that they were doing that before, and all the denial of the government that they were doing it, they were doing it before. This is the admission. And they're going to do it again. And why? You can tack any agenda about why in a whole world about that. They'll, they'll all fit now. This is a decision of a government to do that. You can't tell me that someone like Kim Jong-un wouldn't take offense to that and decide he has to protect against this overt uh, aggression. And I find it interesting how they've uh, just comes right after the uh, right after the acknowledgement that a uh, someone who went who escaped North Korea into South Korea they found that he had antigen or antibodies to uh, anthrax. And so they put it on North Korea. Oh, they're developing. Well, maybe they just figured out they figured out a way to Im immunize you themselves from the effects of anthrax in the military sense, right? It was a military man. But no, they, they say, oh, they're going to weaponize the anthrax, like, like the United States hasn't done that. No, no, they've been doing it. And they, said, they just said that they've been lethalizing everything. And they're going to start up again. Why? It's pretty highly consistent with that, uh, that escape, I, I, at least I see. Moving on with these things, these lethalized things injected and sprayed or whatever given to you, uh, administered to vectored by some bug or whatever. Vaccine industry in a panic as scientific studies solves the riddle of why flu shots don't work. And so where they're trying to lethalize it to make them more deadly, we're finding out the vaccinations uh, literally have a reason why they won't work. And I've got a little, two little links, a structure explanation of the low inf effectiveness of seasonal influenza, H3N2 vaccines. Well, we talk about the pig's fly flu, folks. I told you they were still on that. They were going to put this stuff in all the, the four in one now. Uh, the pig's fly flu was going to be a part of your life in these flu shots. It was all, all novel. It was all created, all fabricated. It was lethalized to the point of giving you the cold, if not help hurting you a little bit more some way else, changing you epigenetically. I don't know all that they could be doing. I've seen all the, some of the reports. It's not, not a good scene, but here's a study on how this works. Guess what, folks? Uh, again, experts say, science says, right? We're going to do it by injecting eggs. And what have I told you when you start doing this kind of in invasion, you start the nature takes a course to try and protect itself as well, and it will do protective measures to do unintended things. We see that in the injection of the cell when they try to change the DNA of a cell. Unintended proteins get uh, a bit get created. No geneticist wants to talk to me about that. In fact, a couple I get blocked from a long time ago, I stopped asking. They don't want to talk about this problem, but this is the problem. The very nature of how they do uh, make vaccines and eggs, uh, the interaction causes mutations, right, that make the vaccines ineffectual or not as effectual or actually a problem. So anyway, I can talk about all this and I just tell it to you. 
You know, those of you focus on the vaccines, here's a report. Here's another thing you can throw in uh, when you make your comments or go to your counties as a health thing, and they have the power to do something locally to shut down this stuff. You have more evidence of what the problem is. You have a little ways to kick the can down the road if it's inevitable, but by that time you should have enough knowledge to be able to say that how anything might be rightfully done if it's to be found that way. And the more knowledge you have about the subject, the more the harder it becomes for them to show uh, to overcome the ignorance because you're sitting there with this provable problem and hopefully you found the one that can't be solved where it can't be solved and it does cause a problem. See, it all depends on how you frame it up. But you have to frame it up and you have to present it somewhere. That gives notice to the rest of the people. You may be the only one that does it. It's why I do this broadcast or whatever value you put on it. It's why I do the broadcast. Something I say may trigger a thought in someone that makes them, gives them an, uh, an opportunity to do something or fixes a problem, obstacle they had, or what, whatever, whatever. I have an opportunity to, to convey some of this, uh, these ideas. Get your, get your juices flowing. Get your mind stirring a little bit more than just absorbing things like a sponge. Yeah, squeeze that sponge and see what pops out. So, uh, again, uh, we have a little story. I didn't even know how to treat this. I want to point out how, how, the, uh, how the university system is messing around. The, the university system is part and parcel to this entire uh, destruction of your way of life, at least the United States of America and lots of other places. It's the implementation of all the procedures and methods to impose austerity, uh, shared prosperity, the uh, foreign agendas, the international agendas. Uh, statement here is kind of ludicrous. I don't even know how to address it. But I'm going to make a comment on how non nonsensical it gets. And really what they're really attacking here, uh, professors, uh, farmers, they say, farmers' markets are insidious white spaces, normalized white eating habits. What? Uh, farmers' markets normalize the food consumption habits of white people and contribute to oppressive and minorities, according to professors at San Diego State University. What are these professors? Well, they're two professors, geography professors. What the hell are they talking about this for? But uh, these two people are uh, geography professors at SDSU, criticize the whiteness of farmers' markets in a chapter for green, uh, Just Green Enough, a new anthology published by Rutledge in December. Farmers' markets are often white spaces where food consumption habits of white people are normalized. Folks, let me just point out, the university system is attacking all production. Uh, uh, you say white farmers, it's kind of interesting how they put this together. Well, anybody can have land and be a farmer. Anybody who is making a discrimination on the access to a, of a, produ a sales point, a marketplace, which is granted to the farmer in these market pl farmer's markets, anybody that stopped it can be hit with a discrimination suit. So this is strictly what the academia is attempting to colorize, a non-color production prop, uh, condition, th that the farmer has a right to market. These uh, uh, Academia doesn't want like anything that allows a producer to market his stuff because that's outside of commerce, that they attack it. This is the urbanites attacking the rural, the, the down the, the servants of the urbanites. Uh, so the farming is also not a color. It's just a production. This is how they get us to fight amongst ourselves. Uh, these people really need to be taken to task. Uh, but it, uh, I'll tell you, this is an attack on production. Uh, it may not look like it, but that's what it is. And then uh, it, con it conditions. They talk about gentrification. Uh, well, I don't know, folks. This is uh, just what people go to buy food when they don't want to buy the uh, manufactured stuff. And they don't want to buy the adulterated stuff. They get it right from the farmer, buy local. See, that's what they're attacking. They're attacking the very thing that they established or tried to establish in permaculture. Anyway, I hope something today I said I said today uh, helps you, help you uh, get engaged, folks. Do the thing, uh, make the wrong that you find right, and and do it with uh, gusto. Grimner, thank you for what you do at RealLiberty.com. Thank you. Uh, uh, for um, ucy.tv, Jules, at what you do there, and the subs uh, b b put the broadcast out so much, and, and all you all, uh, wherever you are, that do the promotion of the broadcast and remind it and minds do appreciate it. E uh, Vince Easley, thank you very much for what you do. Even though we got a little hitch in the giddy up this week, it, it ends up working out. Uh, you all take care. I'll be back next week. Tech diffs are nature willing.
Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass.